Tim Panasic for Gibbons Motor Toys. Today we're going to show you the Kingfisher 3025 uh, destination offshore boat. So we now call this the Legacy Series and the reason for that is this hull has been around for a long time. However, it's undergone many improvements through the years. So we'll take you through those here as we uh, walk through the boat. So first of all, it's called a 3025. So it does measure 30 foot 5 inches in length. So that includes from the bow to the end of the engine bracket. It's a nine and a half inch, a nine and a half foot beam. So you do need to know your state and provincial laws in terms of towing. As far as uh, structure of the boat, it's a, it's a very well heavy built boat. It's an offshore series made for big water. 160 thou aluminum on the sides, quarter inch on the hull. Again, like every Kingfisher boat formed in reverse chines right from the bow to the stern. You got lifting strikes that are st strategically placed. This has got an 18 degree dead rise. So that gives you a nice compromise or as a little compromise, giving you the best of both a smooth ride plus stability when the boat's stationary. There's many features on the offshore boat, such as the, uh, the large offshore stainless steel bow rail, the heavy gauge welded duct, uh, cleats that are part of the structure of the boat. Um, there's a lot of small features that uh, have really evolved through the years. If you look at the cab on the cabin on the outside, you'll notice there's a drip rail above the windows so that water is directed off the cabin down the drip tray that runs off the back so that you're not getting water in your windows if they're open when it's wet. Fuel capacity is 160 gallons. We've got uh, you know both fresh water, we got gray water storage, multiple pumps, macerators. We'll show you that as we get inside. As we get to the stern of the boat, again, you got an optional ladder that folds up nicely out of the way. This has got the Kingfisher Ultra Deck package on it, which we'll show you here and in the cockpit. This has got twin 200s. It's got a 15 horsepower kicker. This is a typical way that uh, we typically will uh, sell this arrangement. It just works really well. Again, it's been around for many years. Uh, this steering system does have a joystick, 360 joystick system in it. It's got uh, EPS steering. So there's a number of benefits to that. Uh, with twins, one of the primary benefits is, is that uh, when you're looking at those engines right now, if you got a sharp eye, you'll notice that there's zero toe in. So typically, if this never had EPS steering, we would probably have close to one inch of toe in so that when the boat's on step, the engines are following the water line, which typically breaks apart from the V. With EPS steering, we'll have this programmed as an example so that there's zero tow in when the boat's stationary up to 3000 RPMs. Once the boat's up on step, beyond that, the engines will automatically tow in, giving you the best performance. The other thing that'll change is the steering ratio. So as an example, at idle, it's gonna be about three turns lock to lock on the steering wheel. Once you're up on step, that'll change to approximately five turns lock to lock. So you have better control at high speed. Okay, stepping on board, we've got the walkthrough transom door, making it really easy to egress and ingress here. You can see the ultra deck flooring that we talked about. We've got a high pressure wash down hose there. Again, we've got lots of good storage, double trays for rods, paddles, gaffs, any gear that you might need. On the port side, we've got a, uh, this is an optional walkthrough door, making it easy to get on and off to a dock. This has got the optional Bimini top, which most of these do end up getting. We upgrade our steering wheels to the 13 and a half inch stainless steel wheel with the, uh, with the, with the suicide knob on it. This got a 12 inch Simrad display. This is an option where you can display it here. So this is flush mounted. You got your controls to your 15 horsepower, and then we got the dual controls for our for the two twin 200s on here. The rest of the switches and such are for your fish boxes, live well, wash down, etc. As far as storage, humongous storage here. So you've got 
that storage on both sides. And I think I said earlier, we got a 160 uh, gallon fuel tank in here. So you're gonna have great range out on the coast. As far as the uh, entering the cabin, one thing that's really nice is if you look at the durability of these doors, just the toughness of it, the way that it locks, no rattle to release it, just simply go like that. So really good quality materials used here. Looking at the transom, we've basically got our uh, fish cutting board here. And uh, if you are processing fish here, you notice we've got these slots here so that uh, blood and small particles can get through there. You're not gonna lose any of your catch. This has got the optional live well in it. Uh, it's not that people are necessarily carrying uh, fish to call them in here, but it makes a great place for, uh, as an example, crab. As far as access to your batteries and electrical, you can see how neat everything is done there. Here we've got twin batteries, one for each uh, 200 horsepower. We've got twin six volt batteries making up the house bank in the back. You can see that this has got the automatic uh, BP switches. So those are actually turned on and off by a switch in the cabin. And again, everything back here is fairly easily accessible, wide open and well marked. We were talking about little things that's improved with the Legacy Series boats. Here's one right here. You'll notice this lip that's right here. Uh, back in prior years, this wasn't here. So if you're out on the water, it's raining, you'd open up this compartment, that water would flow down here and into your billage area. Now it's redirected, so that ends up on the floor. And of course, you got the self bailing deck, so you don't got any of that water getting into your billage. So moving towards the cabin, you probably notice there's an LED aft uh, light there. For servicing as well, inside the cabin, we do have access here where you can actually adjust your uh, gray water so it can be discharged either or overboard or pumped out into a marina. So again, easy access here. There is also a billage here. So on the offshore series boats, the interior of this cabin is completely sealed separately versus the aft deck. So again, that's just uh, the safety of being out on the water. You've kind of got two boats in one here where you got two totally different compartments and different villages for each area. There is a closet area here. Not sure if you could see it. There's actually a rod up there for hangers. So you can uh, hang jackets, clothing there. As we uh, move forward here, I'll try to show the stuff from the angle that we got there. So these seats here, are kind of nice. They pull out approximately eight inches. So that makes it uh, wide enough for two full-sized adults to uh, sit on each side. So all three of these pull out like that. And the other advantage to this is, is that you can pull those seats out. This simply lifts out. Table goes down, two cushions go on there. So this is your bed. So you basically got a double bed there when you got that pulled out. Very easy and quick to do. Looking up at the roof, we've got interior rod holders. That's an option on here. We've got the stainless steel bus bars. So you can stand up, hang on here and rough water. You've got LED lights throughout the roof here. You've got screens, sliding windows. You've got some more storage on the top above the privacy curtains, which are an option here as well. This customer ordered this with the two uh, sunroofs on each side. You've got a nice large stainless steel sink here. Uh, this uh, package has the, uh, we put a Wallace a diesel heater in here. This has got the upgraded stainless steel fridge in it. As far as the cabinetry and workmanship, there's a lot of little things as well. Again, we talk about the Legacy series, but again, this is something that uh, came about a number of years ago, but just little stuff. You go to wipe and clean this, you got spillage here. If you got these lips around here, they're great for holding stuff, but what about when you need to clean up? Well, having this so that it's flush makes a really nice area to be able to sweep stuff off. Same with the table here. Little things you don't think about. This is a great table for holding all your goods, but uh, what happens if you wanted to play cards as an example? Now you can actually pull them through there. 
So it's just little things like that. Again, you got built-in cup holders here. As far as the quality of the hinges, all the workmanship of all these drawers, the quality, how they lock latch. So, so all really good quality materials here. The driver's captain seat does have a shockwave suspension system. You can see that we have our 110 AC control panel there. So all your switches, your controls, your joystick steering. On this dash, we've got a flush mount 16 inch. We've got a nine inch vessel view. We've got a fusion stereo system. We've got the Optimus 360 display. We've got a VHF radio mounted up top. We put the mic there so that it's out of the way. Again, access is available everywhere. Lights everywhere. Speakers, you can see we got them mounted there as well. Lots of dash space, four cup holders up here. And as far as the uh, V berth, there is additional storage up and underneath here. So if you can see that. You've got some nice large storage on each side of the berth. As far as the size of the berth, this is something that a lot of people always wonder about. Now, I will disclose that I'm like a whole five foot seven, so I'm definitely not the tallest guy to be uh, displaying this, but I'll just give you an idea. I'll put my head towards the end here, and you can see where my feet end up on the other end and how much extra space that I do have. So you can really sleep in a number of different angles here. So depending on who's going to be in here, the 30 foot does give you enough room for two full size people to sleep in here comfortably. There is lights underneath here. You got extra, you got vents, you got an escape hatch here, and you've got access if you ever need it to your chain and road for your anchor system. Again, the fit and finish underneath here, the materials that they use, the quality of everything here, the fit and finish is just really well done. Again, just lots, you know, storage everywhere we can put it. Great place for the feet of the driver to rest on. Just to give you an idea of the room that you got here, this has got the optional burn wind mounts on the gunnels. Not sure if you noticed them. There's the rod holders for them. Again, lots of storage. There's another drawer exactly the same as that back there. And as far as the head is concerned, there is an optional hot water package and shower. This does not have that, so this has just got the head without the shower in it. But lots of room, lots of privacy. So this has the optional searchlight mounted up on the bow. We get this pre-wired from Kingfisher so that that wiring is ran through the rails when they're building the boat. This has got the windless anchor. Again, heavy duty welded cleat to, to tie and secure your road to. As we move forward, you can see that it's got you know, three windshield wipers on each window. Looking at the top of the cabin, this has got optional additional stainless steel. So it's got the uh, cross members. These are fully adjustable. You can position them however you want. If you want to put a tender up here, paddle boards, you can accommodate almost anything you want. Crab traps, prawn traps, anything that you uh, can store up here that's relatively light. You see the Simrad radar, the scan strut, VHF antenna. You can see the rod holders back here. You can see the bimini from the top. So this roof is really a useful area that can be used to accommodate uh, many things. Also of note is the welded eyelets here. So if you do have stuff that you're putting up here, instead of just securing to the rail, you can rest your stuff on the rail and then you can put your tie straps into these welded tie down points. And uh, you can also look on the side of the cabin there and you can see now from the top where I'm talking about where you got the gutter where the water gets channeled. Here's another option. This has got the steps to get up and access the roof. All you do is just simply go like that and that makes for a really easy access up onto the roof.
Another optional feature that Kingfisher has is uh, if you look at this uh, hardware here and you can see the ring in front of it, that's simply designed for your net. So the uh, handle of your net would be stuck in there. And then as far as your net, it's going to rest right here. The upper ring on the net, you just simply stick it in here, let that go. And now you've got a net that's stored out of the way. As usual, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you enjoyed it, uh, please uh, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks.